Have you ever seen something that wasn't meant to be clothing, but still thought, I'm gonna put that on my body? Lizzie McGuire, you are an outfit repeater. So it seems like for every holiday, every season, the dollar store has different types of mesh that correspond with the holiday. And so as soon as they started putting out the Halloween stuff, I snatched a bunch of this sparkly mesh with spider webs on it. This is the purple, but as you'll see, I ended up using the orange for this project. Don't ask me why, but when I saw it, my first thought was to make clothing out of it. Well, golly gee, I just think that would make a fantastic dress. I mean, it's fabric. It's not that illogical, right? So while it is technically fabric, uh, it's very cheap and does not want to be made into clothing. So once again, here's an unnecessary video recapping my process of forcing something to be clothing that does not want to be. As always, let's start with a concept sketch of what I intend to make out of this cheapo fabric. I ended up using eight rolls of this stuff, but not the purple ones. I don't know why I bought those. I again used McCall's pattern MP405 for the bodice, just like with my previous project, but this time I made a proper mock-up with actual fabric to test the fit before cutting into the sparkle mesh. Since the mesh is see-through, I made a lining with some black fabric I already had on hand. Yes, I know it's not technically from the dollar store, but it just made much more sense to use stuff I already had. The rolls of mesh weren't quite wide enough for some of the bodice pattern pieces, so I divided those pieces in half, making sure to add seam allowance back in. Here's a part of my sewing process that I don't usually show you, pressing all my seams. This is why it takes me so long to finish things, but it really makes the final product look so much neater. I used the iron on a low setting with scrap fabric as a pressing cloth on both sides to protect the mesh. I also decided to add boning to the sides of the bodice within the lining layer. These two pieces were actually salvaged from a dress alteration I did last year for a friend, thus further reinforcing my tendency to save everything. Before I could attach the lining to the mesh shell, however, I needed to add my straps. I again made a mock-up of my elasticated flutter sleeves before making the real deal. I attached the straps through the lining so that it wouldn't be visible from the front, and then added the mesh layer. Y'all, there is glitter on everything. Like, even my face. Just glitter everywhere. clipped the seam allowance before understitching it to the lining. Then it was time for the skirt. Each tier was one and a half times the length of the layer above it, which by the time I got down to the fifth tier added up to about six yards around. And it all had to be gathered by hand. So, so much gathering. With the shell done, I made a lining that was a couple inches shorter than the skirt and the same width as the top tier. I attached these along the top, then hand gathered the skirt to be attached to the bodice. The very last step was to add the zipper and close up the back seam and add the finishing touches.
<laughs> it's done and it's so cute i i love this this turned out so cute it's a little bit itchy but that's what i get for using dollar store mesh yeah i i'm really happy with how this turned out it's very cute and spoopy and it feels a little bit vintagey so i kind of tried to play that up with my hair and makeup a little i don't know where i would wear this though the only thing is though because the mesh is so cheap i feel like any pressure on any of the seams or like any pulling and they might start coming apart so i feel like this is the kind of dress that you can probably stand around and hand out candy in but i would not want to do anything more strenuous than that i'd be too afraid that it would just start completely falling apart gosh but it's so cute i mean this turned out just like how i wanted so i'm very happy I think the only thing I might need to redo in the future is the straps. I don't love how I chose to attach the mesh to the elastic. I think I would do that differently if I had enough fabric to redo it. So that might need to be touched up in the future because it's already like not happy with how I sewed it. <laughs> The mesh is very unhappy and then I do need to take the straps up just a little bit. It keeps falling down in the back but that's not that difficult to do if I need to redo that. And my tears didn't quite line up in the back once I had the zipper in. The main thing for me was just that the bodice lined up at the top but then when I went to connect it all the way down they didn't quite line up and that doesn't really bug me. It's not that big of a deal because it's in the back and it's not as noticeable. This is so impractical because I am shedding glitter everywhere. I already went through and like deep cleaned last night once I finished the dress. I vacuumed everything inside of my machines as much as I could, I vacuumed. But just filming these little segments, there's so much glitter again. Like there were piles of it on my desk, enough to like cut lines with it. I'll say no more on that. And we will be finding glitter in our laundry and other places probably for the next six months. I am so sorry, Charles, eh, but it was worth it to make something that makes me really happy so so i hope you guys are enjoying spooky season thank you so much for watching if you made it all the way to the end um leave a little spider web emoji in the comments don't forget to follow me on instagram and subscribe oh my stomach growled <laughs> bye